Culture is brought to you in part thanks to the Miriam Aaron Rowland Canadian Content Fund, helping Vermont PBS increase its commitment to Canadian and cross-border programming. Montreal is one of the top game development hubs in the world, period. Take them, take them, take them. Let's go, let's go, boys. Our team of reminds was contacted by PewDiePie himself and he said, hey guys, I like what you do. Would you like to make my official game? There's so many people that only look at games as a way to waste time. Games really now are seen as a valid form of human expression. I like being transported to other universes. The game industry, it's bigger than Hollywood, it's bigger than movies, it's bigger than, I mean, it, it is ginormous. Our whole reputation kind of rides on this. You're only as good as your last game. Games, I would say, is, is going to be the dominant art form of the 21st century. Culture. 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 Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're here tonight to celebrate the release of Moon Hunters. As the face of Kit Fox, I just want to say that your support has meant a lot to the whole team and the game wouldn't be the same without your wonderful feelings. I just want to say that even though it's our second game, it's the biggest game we've made so far and it's our, you know, our, our biggest launch. This is my first game. I am super excited. <laughs> it's actually out. Yay Moon Hunters! <laughs> I thought it went really well. I've only gotten eight responses back, but I think that's because people won't fill out the survey until they're done playing the beta. I've been playing games since I was four or five years old. I've always really loved online worlds. The idea that there's a place where you and your friends can go and be whatever you want. And as a game designer, I find it fascinating, the fact that players get to put their own energy into the art. Moon Hunters is set in a fantastical ancient Mesopotamia, in which you are an ancient hero, and you're finding out what story your future generations will tell about you. We've been surprised from the beginning of how much this idea resonated with people. We launched a Kickstarter for $40,000, and then we got 178,000, so people were really into it. Kitfox is two and a half years old now, and Kitfox was started by four people. We have two programmers, an artist, and a designer. The four members of Kitfox met through the local games meetup society. Um, it's called the Mont Royal Game Society. Welcome everyone to the Mount Royal Game Society meetup for March. We're going to have short presentations and some socializing time. I think the Montreal Game Society is essential to the Montreal scene. It's so diverse. It's made up of academics and hobbyists and indies, and they can get together and show what they've been working on. And there's no judgment. It's all just very encouraging. It's very difficult for a lot of developers. They work very individually. You know, you're a one-person studio working in your, your basement. I mean, you need to get out there and you need that support network. I put out a call saying, anybody want to start a studio with me? From the start, we just said, do you want to try this for six months? And everybody said, yeah, sure, we'll start, try it for six months. And it went so well, we, we couldn't stop. <laughs> uh, congrats to release of Moon Hunters to all you folks at the Kitfox Tribe, writing from a battery factory in Sweden. Wow. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. OK, the updates that we're going to add to it. But in the meantime, just hang on, hang on in there. We're working on it making games. I mean, just it's just on a scale that's almost unimaginable. Somewhere between a 60 to 80 billion dollar industry on a global scale. And yeah, so it's, big, it's bigger than Hollywood. You have some games like Call of Duty or Halo, you know, in one weekend will generate over a billion dollars of revenue. So from a financial or cultural impact are more highly anticipated than any Harry Potter movie or book. Historically, games have been made by large teams, uh, you know, some of the Ubisoft games is a thousand person team making Assassin's Creed. Yo, guys, 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 beep, beep, beep. Next level, man. Beep something, guys. Yo, what hey, all three of you are going to take each of these. One, 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 one
I took out one today. Montreal has a long history uh, in visual simulation and graphic arts. There was all this tremendous talent. I'll call it a you know, rich soil to implant a, a game industry. The Quebec government was quite keen to see that kind of industry open up shop in Montreal. And so they provided quite a uh, financial incentive and tax breaks and so on. And really from there, the things started to snowball. Montreal is well known for having very large production studios and literally there are hundreds and hundreds of talented developers that exist within those studios. What's happened over the years is that with the growth of the internet allowing players and creators to find each other, the independent game industry has been growing a lot. We can just upload the file to a server and the players can download it themselves. So our team with four people we're doing things that wouldn't have been possible five years ago for sure. We had five different characters available um, so people were able to choose which one they like. I think of independent games as kind of like independent film, something really different. If you have complete financial and creative independence, then I think you can call yourself an indie. The biggest challenge in getting an indie game into the hands of consumers is definitely marketing. Yeah, that's better. It's extremely difficult as a small studio to reach our audience. The classic problem of, of pop culture is how do you get discovered. Um, today I'm going to be hosting the live stream. So, you know, part of what Execution Labs does is work on that discovery process. We started as part of Execution Labs, which is an incubator accelerator in Montreal. We provide funding, which often is one of the major resources that independent developers lack. But more importantly, we also provide connections to the larger industry to ensure they have success in the marketplace. A lot of game developers tend to be overly focused on production. Many with amazing talent and amazing results, but you ask them about cash flows and a budget and a marketing plan, I mean, they just, they, ha they have no clue and they have no desire to get a clue. Even if our team was very solid at making games, everything that was around was unknown stuff. So they really helped with that. Execution Lab is in the gameplay space. Execution Lab, we use this as our headquarters. We could have get our own place, but staying here is good. I mean, every time we have questions, there's always someone to help us. Gameplay space is a co-working or shared workspace focused on game developers. So little micro studios as well as freelancers. All these other teams, every time we face a problem, maybe someone else faced it before. And so there's a nice kind of sharing and, and community. We've invested in just over 20 studios since 2013, about a half dozen in Montreal. Most of them are still within the space. This has been a really great place to work in too. Um, I mean, y'all have been really good neighbors most of the time. <laughs> Kit Fox is one of our earlier uh, investments. Uh, we believed in them as individuals. It's been two years since we publicly agreed that we would make Moon Hunters. Moon Hunters looks like it's going to be a great success. And not only are they making a cool game that looks nice, that plays well, that has innovative elements, but they're actually working hard on making sure people are aware of it. Because we really believe in this game and we don't want to let anyone down on this. We're really excited about it. It has a lot of hype around it. You can never know it's going to be a successful game. Nobody can know. Uh, we all try our best. As an investor, you, know, you want to be investing in the thing that's going to be the next breakout hit, but it's almost impossible to decide that. So we tend to be more team focused and the hope that if you back a great team that they'll figure out what the next hot thing is. Probably our most recent success was from a studio called Outer Minds, which is a Montreal-based studio. So Outer Minds was created about a year ago, and we were about to launch our first game, Tadpole Tap, on mobile, when our team decided to go to a game jam, and the top 10 prizes uh, would be to be played by PewDiePie himself on his channel. My name is PewDiePie! Which is huge, because PewDiePie is number one on YouTube with 40 million subscribers and over 10 billion views. Our team got contacted by PewDiePie himself. Today I have some very exciting news. And he said, hey guys, I like what you do. I like your game. Would you like to make my official game? This is still in, uh, in development, so don't judge it too harshly. They ended up making a game called PewDiePie Legend of the Brewfist. With me, PewDiePie. It hit number one on the App Store within the first 24 hours. And then also Google announced that that was one of the best games of the year for, for 2015. I am so proud of this game. Outer Minds, the developers just did an amazing job. This team is particularly talented and they, you know, they hit the lottery by building that relationship with PewDiePie. I'll see you in the game. And as always, stay awesome, Rush. I'll be honest with you, 
any game we would have made with the PewDiePie brand would have been a hit. But we made the best game we could. We made a game that we would actually play. For me, the success of a game, it's, it's not a, only about the sales. It's about the, the rating, the reviews, because you, you want people to have fun with your games. I mean, there are literally so many kinds of games that everyone on the planet can be playing a game, and there's still no one dominant type. There are also games which everyone talks about as being great, but nobody actually buys. We're really hoping we don't fall into that. <laughs> I would rather the critics not like it and sell a million copies. Everyone on stream is like, yes, I know, I see you. <laughs> um, there are nine minutes remaining before Moon Hunters goes on sale on Steam, finally. <laughs> well, we're all pretty excited, but you know, we've been looking forward to this moment for a while, and it is going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> At least we like what we put out there. Yeah, I'm proud of what we've made, absolutely. The art is the most highly rated aspect of the game. We asked for a, a numerical rating, and the art has a 4.2 out of 5. Games now are seen as a valid form of art, as a valid form of human expression. I would say is, is going to be the dominant art form of the 21st century. <laughs> Excited? Excited for the champagne and all that? <laughs> Six, five, four, three, two, one. Push the button! <laughs> With our mugs of shit. Okay. Indie development. If you actually look at the things that are in the game, like how much we were able to accomplish within two years, and a lot of these things we've actually never done before. It's amazing what we've accomplished, and I'm proud of uh, everyone on the team. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we got people here on the chat. One of them's from Belgium. One of them's from Germany from Eastern US. If this doesn't go well, we'll survive. But it'll be very difficult. This is concurrent players. That's the launch hour. And then hopefully it'll go up. Our whole reputation kind of rides on this. You're only as good as your last game. We've poured all of our energy into it. because There's so much pressure and stress right now. But all signs point to a decent hit. Yeah, yeah, it's good signs, and we'll, uh, we'll have to see how it goes in the next few hours. But we always have to keep in mind, maybe it won't be. Back to work, everybody. <laughs> One of the most important resources we have in Montreal is our talent. We need to make sure that the talent is always cutting edge. So the Montreal International Game Summit, or MIGS, is really one of the cornerstone activities uh, in the year for the Montreal game industry. The session today we'll be talking about managing creativity and building studios. A conference that allowed us to bring in some of these other experts from around the world to share that knowledge uh, with our developers so that we wouldn't sort of be left behind and also kind of serves as a, a sort of a shining moment to give a lot of attention to the success that's happening in Montreal. We're at the Montreal International Game Summit for 2015, where game developers will come to learn new techniques and business development and grow their networks. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm Tanya. I'm Tanya. I'm Tanya, by the way. Nice to meet you. All game developers need to go meet new people. All game developers, to grow their career, have to grow their networks and learn how to make games better. I go to conferences to learn about the, the new trends in the industry. When you're an independent developer, you just hang out with your team all day and you forget all the kinds of game developers there are and all the different kinds of games being made. And just making all sorts of connections doesn't have to lead to anything, but just being part of this community and part of this shared knowledge. I want to welcome you all to the big indie pitch. I'm a judge at the Big Indie Pitch at Mix. Now, what's a Big Indie Pitch? We're about to judge 20 different indie games and see which one has the best pitch. Best way to think about it is this is essentially speed dating, but instead of seeing people, you're seeing games. And at the end of the day, everyone gets everyone else's phone number regardless. For an indie game developer, we have to make our way in a very crowded market right now. So the Big Indie Pitch is a great way to practice your pitching. My name is Edward Douglas with Flying Helmet Games. And also get some outside feedback. You'll have three minutes to pitch your game. 
really hoping I see something that I've never heard of before. Your time starts now. Our game is Eon Alter, one to four players, and everyone uses their smartphone as the controller. People get their own quests, their own objectives that they can choose to share with their other friends. And um, as developers, we grew up playing board games together, and that's what inspired us to make uh, Eon Alter. Wow. That's it, the first pitches are up. Today I'm here to present you a game called uh, Shop Heroes. Uh, it's a bit the reverse of the classic RPG. So instead of uh, playing as a hero that goes questing and defeating monsters, you play the role of a shopkeeper. And then heroes come into your shop and you have to sell the items to those heroes. It's a stopper. So what does that mean? It means that uh, when you press and hold your finger on the screen, you pause it in its place and you stop the character and it speeds up. And that's it. Try it and you'll see it's actually harder than it looks. <laughs> it is harder than it looks. The prototype took one week, this took one year. Hello! Hello! It's kind of a wingsuit based game. You know wingsuit? It's like an extreme, yeah, extreme sport. I'm going to try to fly very, very close to the ground. Whoa. There is a... Okay. Trees. Not Trees. a good idea. Yeah, no. Wow. Impossible. The other thing that we saw here, it's all myself. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're here to represent our game. It's called Magicus. What you have is uh, two combatants are facing uh, squared off. We're gonna give people like the, the mentality of like MOBAs, but with the same type of like um, yo me type of like interaction that's uh, that's uh, located in fighting games. I'm gonna switch the camera angle. So we're gonna have a dynamic camera angle system that's showing like what uh, what the different spells can do. We want to make sure that this game will like knock people's socks off. We want to make a hype game. It's absolutely infectious when their when their enthusiasm goes through. It just takes with a pitch that's a that's a B and takes it all the way up to an A. It's yep. delivery is delivery is everything. I really love the style of drums. Like the the minimal geometry of yeah. drums was beautiful. Like that was the most beautiful game to me. I, I just really liked watching the shapes and <laughs> colors. Are you using that as one of the levels? So it becomes a little bit more of a, a precision thing. Getting there. Yeah. That's it, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. That's something all of these people should be proud of. I mean, the fact that they've made a game is awesome. Some of the pitches I've noticed that have kind of struggled a little bit, they don't know who the game is for. Yeah. Like, well, it's for everybody. No, not every game is no. for everybody. You need to be able to drill down and know exactly who that you're, uh, who that you're going after. Absolutely. Yeah. Hello. What we're trying to achieve here is to help kids learn how to drive a wheelchair in a game. The card controls like a, a real wheelchair. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, let's see what happens. Does it work? Oh, sorry. No, sorry. That was a bug. It happens. Don't worry. Yeah. We do have a card now. I can play with you. I can give you stars like right there. So with that, the parent can play with the kid and help him understand how to drive. Time is up. So this is our rhythm game. Um, main feature is obviously you can play with your own music. So that's one of the things that we're bringing to the table right away. The players already own the songs, we just run it through our system. Uh, basically there's going to be these rivers that are going to fall down the track. If you tap the pucks in the river, you're going to get water droplets, which is our currency. So there you go. The score that you get at the end of the song can be used to compete against friends or worldwide. We're really hoping that, that everyone in general will pick it up. My favorites were Eon Alter. Yeah. I'd agree uh, with that. Dare Up. Dare Up. It was way too hard, but everything else about it was pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Um, Grums was nice looking. Is if you could tell us what your top three games are. Grums. However you pronounce it. Eon Alter. Runs. Runs. Zero. The Star Card. Shop Heroes. Right? Uh, Eon Alter. Dare Up. And Grums. The winner of today's Big Indie Pitch in Montreal is Picnic Games with Grums. Oh my god. <laughs> We're really happy because this is the first time we actually show it to people one on one in public. It's a special sort of environment. It didn't feel like we were pitching in a very corporate spirit. Uh, we felt like we were pitching in a community spirit, but in a way we're being listened to a lot of industry people. It's really special. Thanks, everyone. You were great.
you very much for all you being here this morning. I do feel that there's a lot of issues about being a woman in the gaming industry, and I think our speaker is very well positioned to address that with us this morning. Tanya is a co-founder and a co-director of Pixel. Tanya is an inspiration and a role model, so thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you, Catherine. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing in Pixels. I was asked to speak about Pixels at MIGS, which is a women in games initiative that I run in my free time. I think it's extremely important that more women get into games. Are we only encouraging young, nerdy kids, or are we really saying this is an art form for everyone? I believe all genders, all races, all personality types, we should all be trying to make a game. So what we're creating really is a community where everyone in games can fit in. The women that come into this program, they're bringing in a viewpoint that isn't already catered to. It's a very male-geared industry, but I think by bringing women in there, we can actually bring games with a different vision. We started Pixels also because we felt like a lot of women just didn't recognize that games could be an art form they could participate in. It's more of a passive cultural problem, that because games are technical, game development isn't naturally suited to women. It's eight steps, exactly. and like you just skip to here already. I think it's important that Pixels goes out and says, no, you can make a game. You don't even need to know programming. You can just make a game right now. It can take you 10 minutes, and we'll show you. Pixels Game Incubator, our goal is to empower women to make their first game in six weeks. We get 10 women from different backgrounds. We give them a room and all the help we can. Oh, the installer is damaged. We mostly have students and people just out of schools, but we've had in the past like uh, a mother who was referred by her children. Musicians, costume designer, neuroscientists. There's no like one type of person who discovers game making through a program. It's just like lots of different people trying it out, and that's what we kind of encourage. Whenever I hear someone say the phrase, I always wanted to try making them, but they always seem so complicated. That is our target audience. I think there's like this big confidence boost that they feel, this like sense of community. Yeah. And like self-love and discovering one's own power. I'm really proud of myself, <laughs> even if I do so so myself. They like have this look of, oh, I can do this. Well, the first week I was, oh my god, what did I get myself into? But after I could picture in my head what I needed to do, I did surprisingly good. Everything works mostly fine. <laughs> There's a spelling mistake in there. Okay. <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> I'm the only one who saw it. Okay, good. <laughs> Just kind of creating that sense of wonder in someone is why um, I love games. So for everyone who made a game for the first time, congratulations. We're so, so proud of you. At the end of six weeks, after the incubator is finished, we have a showcase. We invite the community to come out. So, yes, thank you for coming out to the fourth edition of the Pixels Game Incubator Showcase. Yay! <laughs> Let's play. Play the game. We have a record of 16 games tonight. And we're not expecting to see like Halo 4, but we're expecting very personal creations, which is, I think, in my opinion, more exciting than Halo 4. What surprises me the most about the participants is just how good they are and they always just come up with these crazy ideas. It's called putting up a fight, a little word play there. We have a murderous potato trying to be chosen as the best potato so it gets turned into a poutine. It's a kind of combat two-player thing. They attack each other and trying to get to the end first. No! Yes! My game is called Dream Scavenger. You're in a dream and you need to find your lost memory. I like being transported to other universes. <laughs> C'est excellent, ça ne terminera jamais. Oh. Yeah. Bref, uh, bon. good job, félicitations. Hein. Oh man, it felt great. Like, I love seeing people having fun with my games, like having such a good laugh. It's quick, it's easy, and man, is it fun. I'm incredibly proud. Making a game is really hard. These women, they made this game all on their own. Now they're all game makers, and they're all making something different, and it's just, it's mind-blowing every year. I love the feeling of rollerblading. It, it feels really nice. And this is a bug I found tonight. Ah, uh, these are small details, and you did great. Good. I was so busy with my own game. I didn't get the help with this at all. Moon Hunters launches in one week. I'm so overwhelmed by anxiety. We've been working on this for over two years now. Um, and yeah, in one week, it's all going to be the next chapter. We're going to find out how much it was
was worth to the world. <laughs> There's so many people that only look at games as a way to waste time. I have been moved to tears by games. I love for my games to be welcoming to all kinds of people. I want everyone to be able to pick up the controller and just enjoy the game. I hope going forward we can make more games like that. is brought to you in part thanks to the Miriam Aaron Rowland Canadian Content Fund, helping Vermont PBS increase its commitment to Canadian and cross-border programming.